On today's edition of the OT, we take a look at a growing name in LSU football, Terrence McGee. We'll also catch up with LSU volleyball player Desiree Elliott. For the latest in LSU sports, stay tuned. Welcome to the OT. I'm your host, Alexandra Ramsey. Stick with me for the next 15 minutes for the top LSU sports stories. Starting things off, the LSU football team entered Saturday's Cowboy Classic with a lot of concerns, but left with a W. Sports Showtime producer Patrick Clay reports from Arlington. There were many questions surrounding LSU entering the 2013 Cowboys Classic. On offense, would the team improve under Cam Cameron, and could they do so without star running back Jeremy Hill? Well, it's only one game, but some answers may have come from an unlikely source, fourth string running back Terrence McGee. <laughs> McGee had just one career touchdown before Saturday's game, but added two more with nearly 100 rushing yards in Hill's absence, and it was just the chance he was waiting for. You know, I said a long time ago, all you can ask for is opportunity, and when you get it, you got to make the most of it. You know, finally I got one, and uh, I tried to make the most of it. McGee wasn't making any preseason All-SEC lists, but head coach Les Miles knew the junior running back was LSU's best-kept secret. Those people inside this program root for Terrence McGee because she's just a great kid and works hard and, and has talent and ability, and given the opportunity, he'll he'll make that kind of contribution, you know, throughout the year. McGee's breakout performance helped open up the passing lanes, and returning receivers Jarvis Landry and Odo Beckham Jr. took advantage. Both receivers broke the 100-yard receiving mark, the first time that's happened at LSU since 2001. You know, this was our bar. You know, we 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 trying to raise the bar every game, so you know, hopefully, we could do a little more better, a little better each game, uh, progressing through the season. I mean, it surprises me to an extent, but it doesn't surprise me because this is what, you know, we expect to happen and this is the things that we're going for. And uh, personally, I just feel like, you know, each and every game, you know, that could be the case. If their performances were a shock to the Tiger faithful, it was no surprise for quarterback Zach Mettenberger, who's been forming a bond with the duo over the past few seasons. I think they're finally starting to peak to their potential. I mean, they've always been very talented guys. Uh, I would say, you know, their freshman year, they're pretty, pretty immature. Uh, last year, they started mature a bit and then now they're, they're the guys and uh, you know, their preparation and hard work starting to show on the field. In Arlington, Patrick Clay, Tiger TV Sports. Following their 37-27 victory over TCU, LSU improved from 12th to 9th in the AP poll and moved from 13th to 11th in the coaches poll. And while Terrence McGee certainly took advantage of his opportunity with the absence of Jeremy Hill, but what's next for Hill? Tiger fans watched as the star tailback dressed out and warmed up with the team in Arlington but never entered the game. If fans want any hints about when to expect Hill on the field again, take what you can from what Les Miles had to say after the game. Um, I really, uh, you know, we, uh, we, we look forward to, you know, having Jeremy Hill uh, join us uh, in, in playing, but uh, I don't really think it's, it's time to talk about what we missed or, you know, what we, you know, lost with him not being there. Hill's next opportunity to play will be in LSU's home opener this Saturday against UAB. Kickoff is set for 6 p.m. on ESPNU. And coming up, LSU volleyball's stunning weekend in the PMAC, plus how one volleyball player is leading her team on and off the court. We're back with more sports right after this. Setters, outside hitters, middle blockers, Senior volleyball middle blocker Desiree Elliott leads her team on and off the field. Tiger TV's Johnny Lombardi takes us inside for a look. The 2013 LSU women's volleyball team is looking to discover a new direction for the program. 2013 is going to be a year of change for this program. Um, it started in the spring with a recommitment from our young players, mostly our freshman class, of figuring out how to really be compelling and not just be committed to the program. This season's Tiger squad is led by a solid junior class and anchored by a lone senior, Desiree Elliott. Elliott's decorated career includes being honored with the 2012 All-Louisiana First Team, the 2011 All-SEC Second Team, 
and Elliott was the only player to start all 29 matches for LSU in 2012. Elliott is also 18 kills away from becoming the 20th player in program history with 1,000 career kills. She is somebody that every team has to prepare for. The fastest middle in the league and the best slide hitter, which means she jumps off of one foot everywhere, I think probably in the country. Elliott believes that the team's trip to Europe to play exhibition matches against European teams really helped the team's bonding going into this season. That was such an experience that most people in general can't say they've ever done. Along with anchoring this year's squad, Elliot is also in charge of leading the team's philanthropy project, a tradition that Coach Flory encourages her team to do every year. Desi has, has decided that her passion is to help children and underprivileged people, and so we're going to have a Go Kids program that people can bring and donate items for underprivileged families. My mom grew up in this area, and so she knows what it feels like to come from a less privileged family, like growing up as a kid, and I just wanted to give back to the community. Elliot looks to lead LSU to a strong start beginning on August 30th against UT San Antonio in the PMAC. Johnny Lombardi, Tiger TV Sports. Now we're going to take it to the court to see how the Tigers measured up in their opening weekend. LSU Volleyball opened up their season in the Tiger Classic collecting three wins to take the title. The Tigers started off the Classic by beating UT San Antonio in four sets. Sophomore outside hitter Katie Leak earned 19 kills and 14 digs to lead the team. Now remember her name because she was a huge factor in the tournament for the Tigers. On Saturday morning in a double header, the Tigers beat UC Davis in four sets. The Tigers struggled early, dropping the first set against the Aggies, but the Tiger, Tigers would bounce back. Senior Desiree Elliott racked up 22 kills with more than a 400 hitting percentage. Katie Lee kept the heat on from last game by scoring a career-best 31 kills. Center Mallory Pardo also had a career-best 68 assists during the match. In the back half of the doubleheader, the Tigers rallied through five sets to clinch the win and Tiger Cup title. The defense pulled through with Maddie Mahaffey and Brianna Holman tallying nine blocks apiece. Katie Leak had 14 kills and 12 digs to the final game to win. Tournament MVP, the volleyball team carries their perfect record to the Rice Invitational in Houston this weekend. And coming up after the break, how athletic do you have to be to parkour? The OT is back right after this. the show something that involves sports and video games. It's called Mario Parkour. Two friends tried to apply real world physics to an old game. Check it out. see Yoshi running around out there but you can't have everything that's all the time we have for you today thanks for tuning in make sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for the latest news at TTV underscore sports you can catch us again next week at 6 p.m. right here on campus channel 75 Bat and Derek will be on tomorrow for another episode of cold pizza I'm Alex Ramsey and you just watched the OT